last but not least, we expect of you respect. And I please offer the board directors and staff to give you the same respect. Mutual respect, we can accomplish great things. Disrespect, nothing. Having shared that, if you'll all stand and have the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll leave it off. You the flag in the right hand corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, and you may be seated. Review of the agenda. Uh, thank you, Director Johnson. Uh, the agenda is as stated, no changes in the agenda. In terms of communications, I did want to thank the Fremont staff, thank uh, Principal Ben T and his staff for welcoming the board and families tonight. Um, really appreciate the opportunity always to be in schools. And uh, I do hope that attendees and the board had a chance to see the vestibule on the way in and there's uh, those projects are moving. And so it's good to see, but thank you for setting this up tonight. Always good to be here. And uh, that's all the communication I have. Thank you very much. We have tonight um, two staff, two student body. All right, so we're gonna start off with sports. Um, the spring season is currently winding up with lots of events. Um, so Monday golf had their regionals and has officially ended their season. Um, tomorrow we have our boys lacrosse team having their senior night and that'll be their last game until playoffs. Um, the softball team will have their last home doubleheader on Friday and the baseball will have their last home doubleheader on Saturday. The tennis team has districts this Thursday and Saturday. Thursday will be away and Saturday will be home. And finally, the JV track team has districts at home this Friday and varsity team has districts in Grants Pass tomorrow and Saturday. Um, for school, FFA's vet science team won first place at state and has qualified for nationals. Um, robotics is going to be hosting an expo this Saturday in the main gym at RHS. All of the AP tests started last week and have continued over to this week. Um, and as the end of the year rolls around, the band and choir are having their final concerts. So the percussion ensemble and the jazz band have a concert next week on Tuesday. And the concert band has one on the 25th of this month. And the choir also has a concert on the 23rd of this month. So leadership has been having a lot of events going on. Prom was on the 29th of April, and it was a very big success. Um, we also had our first ever family brunch, and uh, that was this past Sunday, and it went very smoothly. And just today, we had our elections for our class representatives and our ASB president and vice president. So we are thrilled to announce that Emma Rethwell is our sophomore class rep. Brian Eggleston is our junior class rep. Sylvia Ekman is our 2023-24 ASB Vice President, and Hannah Heiberger is our 2023-24 ASB President. Uh, we will have an in-class vote for freshman reps at the start of the next school year, and we will have uh, we will be giving the presidential candidates who did who lost the election today uh, the chance to run for senior class rep. And coming up, we have homegoing week with the volleyball games and homegoing assembly. And during this assembly, we are going to have our annual lip sync battle. And for the last event of the year, we have our senior sunset, which will be taking place May 31st at 7 p.m. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to present the first student award tonight to Eastwood Elementary student Clayton Hatton, a fifth grader.
Clayton, would you come up and all your family? <clears throat> For those of you that are not aware, we have given each or will give each student a uh, diploma type thing where they can hold their name on it and also a McDonald's gift card, compliment of a McDonald's corporation here in Roseburg. So be sure and thank them for their sponsorship. Let me share with you what they said about you, Clayton. It is our pleasure to celebrate and honor Clayton Hatton. Clayton has attended Eastwood since kindergarten. His legacy of perseverance, kindness, and overall gentleness fills our hearts with hope for a better world. Clayton Hatton is a respectful, kind-hearted, and hard-working student who is always willing to share a sweet smile with others. He is a wonderful member of our Eastwood family, and we are both excited for him to move to middle school and sad that we won't be able to see him every day next year. Anyone who has encountered Clayton can attest to the inspiration he spreads wherever he goes. This year, Clayton has tackled challenges with determination, a smile on his face, and a work ethic that many can admire. Clayton is also the kind of student who will accept others for who they are without judgment. He always lends a helping hand and offers support. Clayton always approaches difficult tasks with optimism and willingness to work hard to do his best. We are very grateful to see the time we got to spend with Clayton and are excited to see what adventures life may bring his way. Congratulations, young man. Clayton, congratulations. Picture time. Ready? Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next honoree is a student from Roseburg High School. 11th grader, Addison Sullivan. Addison, let me share with you. Addison attended Hugh Crest Elementary School and Joe Lane Middle School before coming to Roseburg High School. She enjoys spending her time with her dog, her little sister, and her friends in her spare time. And her favorite classes are science and math. Teachers say Addison comes to class with a positive attitude and is always there to learn and work hard. She participates often, answers questions in class, and is the epitome of positivity positiveness. She treats everyone with respect, consideration, and kindness. In her art class, she elevates the level of discourse and is always thoughtful in how she approaches her work and respectful in discussing her classmates' art. She uses her creativity to solve artistic problems and pushes herself to improve. She is a gem. Congratulations, Addison.
Thank you very much. Congratulations. Our last honoree for tonight is a student at Fremont Middle School, an eighth grader, Ethan Williams. There you go, front and center. Perfect. Congratulations. Let me share. Ethan Williams is a very bright student who works hard at everything he does. His grit and determination has paid off in multiple ways and will continue to help him achieve great things in his future endeavors. Not only is Ethan a hard worker, he is kind to everyone around him. Ethan gets along well with all of his classmates and always takes the extra step in helping those around him in class. Ethan is also a talented musician in both band and jazz band, and he is very involved in cribbage. He pushes himself to do his best in everything, whether it is in his academic, our extracurricular pursuits. He is a person of great integrity and a wonderful role model for his peers. Fremont Middle School is a better place because of your presence. Congratulations, Ethan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to all. We will now do staff. Uh, it's my honor this week to recognize um, two staff members. Um, I will just say that this week is a uh, national teacher and staff appreciation week. And so as I honor these two particular staff members, I would just like to thank um, everyone who works with our kids. We're so grateful for you. Uh, so first off, um, Jamie Banta from Fremont Middle School. The whole Fremont team should come. Anyone from Fremont should join up here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fremont people. Let's give her a crowd, her fan club. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, Jamie is known for being enthusiastic, bubbly, and encouraging. Fellow staff report that she is an amazing team member and teacher. Her secondary resource center colleague, Megan Couch, says that Jamie is the foundation on which the SRC program was built and is a rock for the students and staff. The Fremont SRC program would not be what it is today without her co-piloting the whole way. Jamie's commitment and passion for serving some of Fremont's most fragile students is so impressive. Her joy is contagious and seen on a daily basis. She loves her students deeply and is always thinking of new and different ways to help them. Fellow staff members are also grateful for the way Jamie took them under her wing and helped them be successful at Fremont. Congratulations, Jamie. Um, your crystal apple says, you can do hard things. <laughs> this must be her catchphrase. <laughs> I have a feeling a lot of kids hear that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Fremont people want to stay. Jake Hughes, <laughs> just stay up here. And yeah, all his fan club. Let's fill him up. <laughs> Jake's colleagues describe him as approachable, encouraging, caring, and funny. He's 100% committed to whatever he's doing. 
Jake's quick, consistent, and efficient behavioral support has helped classrooms run more smoothly, and he has a thoughtful and reflective approach to management and student discipline. In his office, discipline means teaching. Jake is one of the first people at the school each day and one of the last to leave. His dedication to Fremont students and staff is evident. He builds great relationships with the students and always has their best interest in mind. He pushes employees to be their best and does the same with students. Plus, the singing makes them all smile. Congratulations, Jake. And uh, let's And Jake Sapple says, general up. <laughs> I feel like maybe we should have had a song, like uh, next time. maybe next time. OK, little musical interlude. <laughs> I want to give a warm congratulations to all the deserving students and staff that received the reward tonight. Uh, we're going to take a brief recess and allow those of you that came for that occasion to go home. This is also your final opportunity, if you desire to be a speaker, to fill out a card, because during the intermission, we will gather the cards. Thank you so much for coming. Stay dry out there. It's raining pretty hard. <laughs> intermission time. So far, so good. Yeah, good job. Great turnout. Yeah, I love that part of the meeting. This is the best. You know, I, I, you guys, such great kids, great staff. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. And I love the cadence of the meeting where I just start with that. Well, well Jake Hughes, white. Is the dental hygienist.
I vote to approve the consent agenda. I'll, I'll second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're now going to enter into public participation. We offer you this opportunity to address the board and we ask that you do these things with respect one for another. I'm gonna ask Assistant Truman D to have a timer viewable on the screen so that you know when you're aware when you're two minutes are up. We professionally and politely ask you to cease conversation in two minutes. Y'all need? All right, first up is Rhonda Carter. Michelle, do you want to get up on deck? Do you want to be back on deck? Oh, yes, and um, Lisa Harris will be on deck. Will you make sure we left the green button on if it's not It's on. on. Okay, I'm so scared to death. <laughs> it's my first board meeting. Hi, my name is uh, Rhonda Carter. Good evening, board members and other members. Um, I am an IA3 in the DLC room at Fir Grove Elementary. I'm here to make a persuasive case for, um, I just lost my place, persuasive case for our hardworking and dedicated staff members. As we know, IAs pay, play a critical role in the educational system. I believe fair compensation will attract and retain quality, talented people, which is key to building a solid team. Mm -hmm. Incre increasing compensation for IAs is a factor that helps build that team who is positive, dedicated, and highly skilled, and also committed to our students. Wages need to be matched <clears throat> for instructional assistance, extensive for instructional assistance, extensive responsibility beyond the classroom. Example, playground activities, uh, bathroom needs for students with special needs, and the list is so extensive that my examples are minimal. These responsibilities require time, effort, and skill. By giving competitive wage increase, it would provide a positive outcome by alleviating financial stressors on the assistants. It is called a living wage. So assistants can focus on a pos on, on providing the best possible support for their students. The increase would also help staff feel valued and supported in their works and their beliefs. I believe the increase would also help with retention of those quality people that we are looking for. I urge you to consider my argument and take action. Thank you. Hi, I just wanted to come today to just talk about the wonderful teacher, Miss Kenyon, and just hopefully remind you all of how great of a woman she is and how great of a teacher she is. Um, I had the pleasure of working with her for several years over at Fullerton. Um, my kids have grown up with Miss Kenyon, or as my son calls her, the cheese lady, because she always has a tasty little cheese snack for him. Um, he's known her since he is three years old, and next year he is a fifth grader, and he has waited his whole school life to be in Miss Kenyon's class. And I have not had the heart yet to tell him of what's going on yet, because it is seriously going to break him. Um, Last, this last year in September, our house burned down. And one of the first people who called us was Miss Kenyon, just to make sure that we were okay and we had what we needed and that my kids were okay. And I sent my kids to school the next day because I didn't know what else to do. And they were met by the staff at Fullerton, but Miss Kenyon being one of them, and she had gifts for them. She had clothes for them. She had toys, stuffed animals, blankets, things to replace everything that my kids had lost. 
She is more than just a teacher. She cares so much about these kids. She is the person that my son goes to if he has a problem at school and he gets overwhelmed, he knows he can go to Miss Kenyon and she's always there. She will drop what she's doing if she sees him coming. She will call me if she sees that he's having a bad day and be like, hey, he was off today. Maybe, you know, is something going on? She's, she's just, I just want you all to know that she's more than just an educator. And just please keep in mind that the impact the loss of her would be to our kids. Cause like my son, I can't tell him. I can't even tell him because thank you. Am I right? <laughs> Oh, after me. Oh, okay. I'm up to bat. Oh, tough. Uh, my name is Scott Lovemark. I uh, wanted to take a moment. I saw that building sites was on there earlier. So I thought you were going to discuss that first. And so I didn't know if I should put my name in the hat or not put the name in the hat. So I went ahead and put my name in the hat anyways. But just wanted to thank you for uh, last time we were here. And, and I know we had lots of different issues going on in the board member that everyone had to deal with. And I uh, just want you to know that we have been still been moving forward. Uh, we now have a estimate for our sign. This is to put add Thurman Bell Stadium to Finley Field. And I have copies for you if you'd like to do that. But uh, I'm probably just going to stick around. You listen to the buildings and sites committee report later. Okay. So thank you. All right. Is Jaren All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Tracy Ayers, and I've been working at Melrose School for two years now. I came to work at the school district two years ago after realizing that although I loved my career doing hair, I was not physically able to continue it until retirement. I consider myself lucky to be here. I truly enjoy working with the students. I feel supported by my coworkers and by my supervisors. I get to be at school with my own children and see them during the day, not to mention my back doesn't hurt constantly anymore. That being said, um, the position has come with some stressors that make me question how beneficial it is to continue working for this district. Roseburg is the fifth lowest paying district in the state of Oregon. To be clear, there are nearly 200 districts in Oregon, and only four of those are paying the same or less. I'm at the school five days a week, six hours a day, but in order to continue paying my bills, I also still work at the salon on my weekends, and even some days after school. Despite working six or more days a week, my family of four still qualifies for SNAP food benefits. I wish that I could say that I'm the only one in the district experiencing this problem. Many of the classified staff in our schools have second jobs and yet still struggle to cover necessary expenses. The cost of living in Roseburg is higher than the state average, and we're being paid nearly the lowest in the state which makes the financial insecurity that much more difficult on all of us. We are unable to live on our salaries, which presents us with a Sophie's choice. Do we give up on our children, uh, move into a job that is less gratifying, but will provide enough income to live on? Or do we stretch our tiny resources as far as they will go, live paycheck to paycheck, unable to even afford basic necessities in order to keep doing what we love? I have more, but I'll leave it off at that. <laughs> Thank you. After Jared will be Jesse Wall. Okay. Um my I have two statements. One was written by a teacher in the district, Megan Driver. She was not able to be here tonight because she's with her daughter. Um, and 
Angeli Kenyon is not every teacher. This is the teacher who has her guitar in the class and gets a bunch of fifth graders to sing silly camp songs in order to connect, in order to connect and unite them as well as provide fun. This is the teacher who helps out with our amazing talent show every year, staying hours and hours past her contract for days, ensuring all the kids get their moment to shine and feel like a big deal. This is the teacher whose class rabbit is a part of the school family. It's car she's carried, he's carried around lovingly in a front pack and is able to roam an overly crowded classroom freely while it's filled with students who care for it and keep it safe. This is the teacher who works hard to make education accessible, engaging, inclusive, memorable, and fun. This is the teacher who sees all kids and makes sure none of them fall through the cracks. This is the teacher who leads the way on classified staff appreciation weeks, going above and beyond, making sure that each of us knows we are an integral part of making our schools run and that there are no small parts and that all are celebrated. This is the teacher who threw a staff kids Christmas party in her classroom so that the staff Christmas party could focus on the staff. This is the teacher who's ready with a hug, a smile, a joke, sarcasm, a cheese-based snack, love for any and all who need it. This is the teacher whose students return for years to come visit long after their elementary days are through. This is a teacher who has a stash of ice cream sandwiches at all times to celebrate each of her kids' birthdays. This is the teacher that embodies inclusivity, believes firmly and boldly that all should have a voice, and who stands no matter the adversary. Adversity, I'm sorry. This is the teacher who arrives early, stays late, and always has an open door. This is the teacher I wish my own daughter had the privilege to receive an education from. And this is the teacher you cannot replace. This is the teacher you never want to lose. And that's all we have time for. Thank you. Jesse is standing next to me. My name is Jesse. Uh, I'm a librarian at Melrose. I'm going to be reading a story um, because I'm a little more comfortable with that. Uh, it says, it, the title is, What Do You Do With the Problem? It's written by Colby Yamda, and I added a little tidbits in there as well. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it but it and I didn't ask for it I really didn't like having a problem but there it was like not being able to live on my own anymore every place that I could afford I didn't feel safe in just doing a walk view viewing it's taken me 10 years working with the district to just make a little over 18 dollars an hour why is it here what does it want what do you do with a problem I thought I wanted to make it go away I shoot it, I scowled at it, I tried to ignore it, but nothing worked. I still have to budget every penny, every last penny. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? Hoping and praying that I don't have any extra expenses each month because I don't have any extra money. I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and I worried about that. I worried, the more I worried, the bigger my problem became and my checks stayed the same. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything, it, I could hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself, but it still found me. The more I avoided my problems, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all, like not being able to afford to go do things with other people because I had to save my gas money because of the prices. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I'm making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. I realized I had to face it. And even though... I didn't want to. I even thought I wasn't really afraid to tackle my problem. Please take this opportunity to not just think about it, but actually make it happen. Shannon Mason and on deck is Eric Fullerton. 
via phone recording. Hello, my name is Shannon Mason and my address is 2826 Colvin Street, Roseburg, Oregon. I would like to address the matter of Ms. Angelie Kenyon and her position at Fullerton 4 this year. I used to sub in Ms. Kenyon's class as an IA from time to time. Her class was a little hectic at times, but she always knew exactly what to say or do to handle each individual student. She could calm her class down in seconds in a healthy and respectful way. Watching her teach was amazing. She would approach topics in such an out of the box way in a way that made them need to know the answer. Since Ms. Kenyon has left, I have subbed in her class a few times and I am now scheduled to finish the rest of the year in this position. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> that being said, I have seen firsthand the effects of Angelie's absence the effects that Angelie's absence has had on her students. The class has lost its safe person, their connection person. All around, students are more dysregulated. Behavior problems have increased with all students, including those who have never had a single issue in the past. These drastic, this drastic change in behavior leads me to believe that Angelie leaving has impacted everyone, her students, the staff, the entire school, even our community. Miss Kenyon is one in a million and all of our students past, present and future are so lucky to have had a teacher who loves them, respects them and would do anything to make sure that they are on track. These kids don't deserve all the stress this has caused them. This is their last year. They deserve to leave their elementary years behind on a high note. Miss Kenyon is not just any teacher. She makes kids love school. She creates a good bond <laughs> with each and every one of her students. She's the teacher that not one of her students will forget. So Eric Fullerton is sick. Um, he wanted to read this, so I'm going to try and play it. My name is Eric Fullerton, and I am the special education teacher for the Melrose uh, Developmental Learning Center. And I wanted to take a brief moment to say thank you all for your service and commitment to our school district. I know this is a timed mic. Um, it's, I think, two minutes, so I'll try to be brief. I'd hope to be here in person to attend this board meeting today and stand with our classified staff and their efforts to be fairly compensated for their commitment, passion, and dedication that they show daily for this district. As a teacher who works intimately with a staff of six instructional assistants to support students with significant needs, I believe that it is essential that the board knows and acknowledges that the function of our schools is not just dependent upon our certified staff, but critically dependent as well upon our classified staff. I implore the board to help drive this district to invest in our classified staff and compensate them fairly for the critical work that they do every single day. All of our classified staff are integral members of our school community. They work closely with our teachers and administrators to ensure that all students have the supports that they need to thrive in the classroom and the school as a whole. Some of our classified staff help provide individualized supports to students, help manage small groups and classroom behaviors, as well as facilitate educational activities. Others help ensure that our schools run smoothly, perform important administrative tasks, and maintain our schools and campuses for the entire district. Despite this critical role that our classified staff play, many are paid wages that do not reflect their contributions to our school. This is simply unacceptable. Our classified staff should be valued for their work and compensated accordingly. Many of these dedicated professionals are struggling to make ends meet, and even though they work tirelessly to support our students' education, their ends aren't meeting up. This is not just unfair to our classified staff, but also to our students, our teachers, and our administrators who rely on them for support. Raising the wages of our classified staff would also help to attract and retain the best possible candidates for these critical positions. Raising wages will help address staffing shortages that our district, that our district is currently facing. Many classified staff are leaving their positions for higher paying jobs. Some of them are even leaving this profession that they love and are skilled at working in to other industries just to ensure that their families are provided for. Yeah. 
That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for your participation. We are indeed honored that you took part of your time or your busy schedule to come share with us tonight. Thank you. Moving forward, the second first item on the agenda is the approval of the purchase of Chromebook. Assistant Superintendent Nee, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Thank you. This is the purchase of the Chromebook is an effort grant from the purchase. Um, this quote is per device includes the device, a power adapter, and a two year warranty, including accidental damage. The warranty covers standard issues for two years. Uh, CTL pays for shipping both ways the first year. During the second year, we pay shipping for them and they pay for the return. During the two years, each device is covered for accident, accidental damage, such as dropping, screen breaking, et cetera. Um, 100 of these Chromebooks will go to the elementary schools. These are to replace broken Chromebooks um, that cannot be repaired, as well as the Chromebooks for any increase in enrollment. We currently are one to one, so every student in our district has a Chromebook. Um, 150 of them will go to the middle school, and 300 will go to our district. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the purchase of the Chromebooks as requested. I'm not until we get a second. I'll, I'll move or second whatever. You, you go need. ahead and move. I'll I will second. move to purchase the Chromebooks. <laughs> and I will second. Now we're just for the discussion. Um, I just wanted to, uh, for the updates, Something I was looking it up on uh, earlier today. Is it a six year where we get updates on the Chromebook? On our Chromebook? Yeah. Um, if every three to four years, they're in the life. Um, it just depends on the Chromebook. So we have a schedule this year since we bought um, Chromebooks previously. We don't have any expiring, but next year they will start to expire. And so then they cannot be updated after that point. Um, and so each year I will pre present that information to the board, the number of Chromebooks that we need for that year. But the updates, they last for four years. Is that the yeah. duration? Yeah. Okay. Before they expire. Yes. Then the Chromebooks are out of date and you have to purchase it. Any other questions? I would actually be amazed if a Chromebook made it four years. Ah, uh, yeah, I can attest with yes. Those Chromebooks. That's yes, true. Well, <laughs> I mean, you try to encourage them to so be careful, folks. <laughs> I, I would also mention too, we um, the COVID ESSER funds have an expiration date of, I think it's September first of twenty twenty four. Um, it's a grant. Uh, those three ESSER funds that have come in. That's the purchase would be out of those dollars. Are there any further discussion? There being none, we're ready for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries, so noted. The second item on the agenda is to approve a joint UCC Roseburg Public School staff position. Uh, Superintendent Courtney, you're on the Thank you, Dire thank you, Director Johnson. On the clock, I got to move quick here. So, uh, in alignment with the board's strat plan, uh, last board meeting, I shared the desire to move forward with a jointly funded position with UCC uh, to help design and align some CTE programs that primarily focus on advanced manufacturing and the medical professions. Um, those pathways, um, I have received multiple messages and appreci of appreciation and endorsement from local businesses who are excited about. Um, and have a desire to hire our students locally. And um, I'm happy to entertain any questions, but would ask for the board's approval to move forward on the, that position for next year so we can get that job posted and um, moving forward on that position for next year. Do I have a motion to approve the joint UCC RPS staff position? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Um, and do we have any questions? Dollar amounts. Uh, fifty-eight thousand dollars with benefits on our side, Cheryl. Or am I, I think that's right. Fifty-eight thousand dollars with benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Are we ready for the question? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion has carried. So noted. 
Item number three, consider the criteria for extending the school year in response to school closure days. Uh, I've asked Superintendent Gordon to explain that for us, please. Okay, so, yeah, I thought you were explaining this. So, uh, okay. yeah. but, but, but I certainly can, but. Your choice. Okay. Actually, I think, I, I, what do you say we just make a joint decision that we have uh, Vice Chair Larson explain this tonight? What do you think about that? Larson, go. There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, so the board is aware um, that we have gotten lots of inquiries about what happens as the district, as we have days um, from staff and families, what we do when we have to cancel instructional days for any reasons. Um, that are out of our control. So we have smoke, we have heat, we have snow days. Um, and so there's always a lot of confusion. Are we making this up? When are we making this up? And so um, it was proposed that to provide some transparency so families are not wondering. Um, for considering potential makeup days, it would be beneficial to everyone to establish some clarity on how we will handle these going forward beginning next school year. So, um, we would like the board to consider a standard of practice that if school is canceled for fewer than four days, so if there are three days that are canceled, um, those that threshold, those days will not need to be made up. We are within instructional limits hours, so we're not we're not threatening our instructional hour limit, but if there are three days, the first three days that we miss will not be made up. Um, once we hit a three day threshold, um, the board will then start to consider adding makeup days. Um, that, and we'll start by using the ones we've already identified in the school calendar, but if not, we'll look at things like the end of the year, depending on when the closures occur. Um, we're concerned as we move forward, sometimes in the fall when we have bad wildfires, we've had to cancel school because of air quality concerns. Um, we may have heat closures sometimes in that fall sessions, we have heat closures. So it just helps everyone know that the first three days, they don't have to be consecutive, that school is canceled, um, we'll not try to make those up. But once we hit day four, we'll start doing makeup days. We'll use the ones we put in the calendar, if we run out of those, then we can start considering adding things at the end of the year. So this is just a proposal to make it so that we don't have the confusion. I know my phone rang off the hook, um, especially right as we can't had a snow day and it was right before one of the makeup days on the calendar and everybody was like, are we going to be making this up? I already have weekend plans. And there just was a lot of frustration. And so we just thought it might help families know if we could just decide now um, as a board. So this is up for discussion now. Uh, it's just something that as we met, we wanted to bring to you. So, oh, sorry. I'll recognize you. I'll let Howard take it over. Now. So we're gonna have discussion before. Yeah, before, before we make a proposal, okay. let's just talk a little bit. Um. I'm not prepared to make a decision tonight. Okay. Uh, and, that and, helps us and I'll tell you why. Um, I'd like to get some input from the professionals, that's the teachers, from parents. Um, we had a process in place and it actually works, but it, for some odd reason, it didn't work this year. I mean, the calendar committee gets together, they, you know, they decide on what makeup days are gonna be. And for years it worked. They they knew it was going to be a makeup day, and and I realized what the snow day was on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and then you had the Monday of the President's Day. Well, they're scheduled for that that reason. I'm more concerned about the second snow day, which we had. I had a teacher two or three weeks ago say, "Are we making the second day up?" Well, they don't know, and that was two months ago. And school's going to, for heaven's sake, it's going to be over in a month. So we're kind of to the point where um, my, you know, I, I want kids to be in school, but I don't think you can, it's, it's too late. I don't know why it took so long to make that de decision still hasn't been made. So I, I think we have two separate issues here. So the first issue, um, the second day, you would just, we just write it off. We just go with it. You don't have time to do it, but 
it, the plan did work. You know, we, we should have communicated and said, you know, these are our makeup days, but whatever, I you know, it happens. On this, um, I want to talk to the professionals. Uh, three days is... Three days is three days, and I'm not a professional, but I would assume that three days would have could have an effect on some kids. And and I do look at some of our parents um, who, if, if if there's a snow day, they either have to stay home with their child, or and if they're working, they have they have to give a day up, and they may have to pay child care. Have you on this board, do you know what child care costs? It's ridiculous. It's just like everything else. So before we really get in, I, I, I just need some, I need some comments from the professionals. I need some comments from the parents. And, and that's what I'm going to go with. If they think it's a great idea, then I'm fine with it. Um, but I can tell you, we're going to have some folks say three days. They're going to lose three days. It's It could be an issue for them. So I... I just want some more time to gather some more facts. And I'm not going to say I'm, I would support it. I just, I'm not there yet. Director Lee? Yeah, I have a bias in favor of uh, as many school days as we can have. Uh, I think our school year is, is short anyway. Um, and I, I think perhaps if we had a policy that said that we would decide about makeups at the next school board meeting after a cancellation, something like that. Proposal, I mean, I worry if we had three smoke days in, in September, uh, that would use up our three days. And then, then we're stuck if we have snow later on, unless we made up days in the meantime. So I, I think this is a good start, but I think we probably need to. Uh, I have a question. How far are we over the minimum threshold? Of hours or days that is required by the state. Yeah, so at the um at the at the K 11 level, so the K K8 requires 900 hours. Um K or 9 11, night grades 9 through 11 990 hours and then 12th graders are 966 hours. So our current uh, instructional hours for all students K 11 is 1025. Our senior uh, they get out a little bit earlier is a thousand two so we're over 125 hours over state requirements for um all grades um so we're over 125 hours at the at the lower grades 36 hours is the tightest one is the seniors and so we're 36 hours so sit approximately six days over thank you thank you any other thoughts I generally like to, when somebody has a comes with a new policy, I like to think about it. I don't like to go on things the first time we're seeing this. So uh, I want to think about it. Just table until next time. Yeah, and that's why we're not necessarily voting. That's why I wanted to have discussion before Howard okay. invited us to vote. It was just to kind of get ideas. It was frustrating for families. There was confusion. Um, I think in the in the smoke scenario. That would be a scenario where we are still going to have makeup days built in the calendar, and as soon as we've used three makeup days, then we know the next time we miss a day, we're we're starting to click into those winter makeup days into the President's Day. We're starting to click into those. I would also propose. I just think, as a teacher, my past experience, I would encourage us to find makeup days that are before June. I just I the educational value of an October day or a June day, it's not even the same thing. <laughs> uh, and so I, I just think the way our calendar is built right now, it's ridiculous to stick days at the end of the year. So I think that, that there needs to be some work also on finding makeup days in other places because kids are not going to learn much on June 10th. I can tell you that. <laughs> so are you the help? So, so okay. this is just, let's think about it and bring it up maybe at the next meeting is what I'd propose to Howard. I'm just concerned about this one. This one. So ahead. maybe that's a Jared and Howard question. That's above my degree. If, if, you were, if, you, if we are going to make uh, an action on the current day that needs to be made up tonight, we need to vote on that tonight. 
and we want to tweak the procedure to ensure the transparency and a uniform application of that transparency, we can have a discussion at our next work station. So what, so, so what we're hearing tonight. I will. I'll <laughs> <I'll> third. <laughs> okay. okay. So let me clearly repeat what has been said. It has been moved and second that the current snow day that need to be made up be postponed and passed on. Is that correct? Not made up. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. Not going to make it up. All those in favor of not making it up, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are all out. So I, I somehow think that that an overwhelming unanimous vote. All right, guys. Uh, the. Uh, Superintendent and I and, and the vice chair, we, we discussed this. And what we want, really are trying to do and achieve, if I can put it in, in my language, we want not only all of the directors to know, all the teachers and classified to know, all the community to know what criteria we're using to make up or not make up a snow day so that it is not a last minute item for everybody scrambling to do it. If if you see these series of triggers event, you know you're going to have to make up a day, and we just have to schedule it in. That's what we're trying to do, and we appreciate your support. And heaven forbid, I also think it's important, maybe just for the record, but heaven forbid we have another snowmageddon. Mm -hmm. Anytime there is an actual state of emergency, it's important to note that instructional hours change, yes, and the right. state changes those instructional hours, and often those are not made up. So just for the record. And then Director Johnson, but so I will um at the request of the board, um, we will put together some survey for parents and staff to go out uh and have the results for the or if not before, if not at prior to the board meeting in June. So okay. okay. Thank you. Very good. Don't ask the kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda, we have the need to start the logistics for the school meeting calendar for the 23-24 school year. There has been a draft put in your package. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, uh, some months there are two meetings on the second and fourth Wednesday, and some months there's only one meeting for the month. And we need to do this so that we can get all the logistics in order. I need to have a motion to approve this uh, calendar, meeting calendar. I will move to approve the meeting calendar. I see you carrying the motion. I'll second. It has been moved and second to approve the calendar school board meeting schedule for 23-24. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We are Prepare now to listen to subcommittee reports. It is uh, our desire to have the subcommittee chairperson to share their findings. And first up, it will be Building Insights. Thanks. Uh, so Building Insights Committee met last week and our main topic of discussion was uh, what was brought up in the board meeting the pre week previously. Uh, the renaming of the football stadium to Thurman Bell Stadium. Um, we had a couple, two main points, topics of conversation here. First thing that we decided or discussed was while it's a merited idea and um, we were received lots of passionate um, discussions about why this is merited and we agree with that, nobody ever talked about how this was going to get paid for. Um, there was no discussion on if this is going to be a school funded project or this is going to be privately funded by individuals who wish to use the um, stadium for this purpose. Um, so we thought that we needed to discuss that with the board and that information would need to be presented to the board before anybody wanted to go any further with this discussion. And that led us to our second topic of discussion, which was that a lot of these stadiums and other parts of the state and other high schools have been 
um, using naming rights and have actually been receiving revenue for um, naming stadiums. So we thought that we as a board might want to discuss what that possibility would be at Roseburg, if that's something we wanted to pursue or research to see what is out there. Um, we had asked um, Superintendent Gordon Gordon to um, to do some research for us. I'm not sure if that's on the board, on the table for tonight to kind of do some comps and look around and see what other high school stadiums and what they've done and what they're getting. And if the board decides to to farther go and get a RFP, which is a was that request for proposal request for proposal um, to officially research this subject more. And that's all that we had for our report. Any discussions or questions from the committee? Well, I, I've been historically reluctant to use advertising in the schools uh, to raise money, but I have consistently been on the losing end of those discussions. Uh, and the financing is becoming more and more important. Um, I do think we should uh, weigh the financial lost opportunity if there is uh, versus other considerations, but uh, uh, it makes sense to me to, to get some more information before we make a decision. There will not be a vote on that, but we need to give the superintendent the uh, approval and the authorization to investigate and bring back data at the next meeting. All those in favor of doing that, say aye. Thank you. Second item on the agenda tonight is a subcommittee report from... Uh... Oh, it's yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Director Lee. Um, we're entering into bargaining with both licensed and classified employees. Both of them are presently under contracts that began in July of 2021 and continue through July of 2024. In both of those contracts, we provided for a 2021 rate of pay. And for COLAs in 2022 and 2023, um, at two or 3% uh, each year. Uh, that's uh, to my recollection is because we thought that's about how much uh, prices and wages and everything would be going up. Um, I looked at the all items consumer price index for all urban consumers, partly because I had to look at that on a, on a commercial lease extension that I was dealing with. And that number stood at 289.863 for July of 2021, at 313.651 for July of 2022, and at 320.751 as of March of 2023. And putting together my high school mathematics skills, you think the, the larger number is divided by the smaller number. And that came up to a 10.65% increase so far in July of 21 to the present time. And we haven't even entered the third year of the contract. Um, we discussed that. Uh, prices have gone up for staff. Prices have gone up for the risk. Prices have gone up everywhere. But we recommended that we authorize the superintendent to step to the sort of a, to, to do some enter into discussions with the unions, enter into some sharp pencil figuring uh, with, uh, with our budgets, and look to increase compensation for all classes of employees in reaction to the unexpected amount of inflation that we've got happening. Um, uh, and to do that knowing that it's going to be a new base for the contract that we're going to be entering into in July of 2024. But it just seemed for the committee that it was appropriate to make some adjustment. As a committee, we don't know how much of an adjustment we can make. I think that's a general call we have to make based on expectations and resources. But I would like to see the board as a whole endorse the idea of. Can't do it unilaterally, 
but without being forced, <laughs> we want the district to make some adjustment to compensation to reflect the change in cost of living since July 2020. The chair recognizes that Director Lee has given a proposal. I'd like to have the, the, a motion to approve that as the direction to our superintendent. Do I have a motion to approve? Do I have second. a second? Second. All those in favor of having the superintendent open proceedings with the both unions to say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we will give um, the superintendent a timeline of when he could come back to our, because we would like all of this done by July 1, which is the beginning of the new contract year. So I'll be ready for that prior to the June meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. It is now for uh, director report. And this month we have asked Assistant Superintendent Nee to share her arena. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Johnson. Tonight, I will be sharing um, some updates from teaching and learning around the work that we have been doing. Um, directors on your table, you have a copy of the power and transform framework. I'm going to start the conversation with our strategic plan. Um, board adopted our strategic plan uh, around the areas of appropriate intended instruction, effective operations leadership development and faith and inclusive. And all of our decisions and our work that takes place in teaching and learning is directly tied and connected to our strategic review. Three years ago, we started the work with our instructional framework. In the first year, we worked with our administrators to learn the instructor framework and to give them coaching and guidance on how to provide feedback targeted feedback to our teachers on their instruction and help them grow and learn in the classroom. The goal is to help everyone get around the next bend in the road, in, the road in order to grow their class. So this is for teachers that are on all areas of the spectrum, from new teachers to veteran teachers. We all have places that we can grow and learn and then to provide that support. The second year we brought in teachers to be teacher leaders to be on our team as we were working with the Center for Educational Leadership at the University of Washington. And we also introduced the instructional framework to our teachers in the school. The first year, we worked on two of the areas, and that was student engagement and classroom environment and culture. So those were the focus areas of professional learning was provided for teachers. And then the principals and administrators would go in to do observations in the classroom and provide feedback to our teachers around those areas. Those areas, classroom environment and culture and student engagement are directly tied to the teaching plan for safe and inclusive, which is our classroom environment and culture, as well as appropriate and timely instruction, which is connected to student engagement. This year, we moved to year three, which is our final year working with the Center of Educational Leadership at the University of Washington. And from here forward, we will continue to work on our own um, with their guidance and support as needed. This year, we moved to also to continue to have our teachers involved in this work. And many of our teams grew. RHS um, added teachers to their team, as well as other school kids. And we, the focus of this is the through line that you see up there on the board. And this is the through line for supporting teacher learning. And this starts with leader practice, which is tied to leadership development and our strategic plan. And this is training and providing support to our administrators on how to provide feedback and also how to provide professional learning in their class, in their school, or their staff. That directly impacts our teacher learning and the effectiveness of our professional learning and making sure that our professional learning is tied to the work that needs to happen in the classroom. And that directly impacts the teacher practice in the classroom, which then directly impacts our students' learning. So we are making sure that all decisions that we are making follows along this through line and that we are providing that 
support and the professional learning for all of our staff. And we have also started including our IAs in the work around the um, instructional framework. We are in the beginning stages of that, but next year we'll be focusing on including them more. Are there any questions of her? Hearing none, may I take this opportunity to express my sincere desire for your professionalism and your attention to detail and your tireless effort to do your job. We appreciate it. It's time for the superintendent's report. All right, thank you, Chair Johnson. The board um, should be, I've got a short report for you tonight. Um, I wanna start by uh, just thanking Fremont. Um, it takes work to get these meetings ready. And then it takes work to clean the mess up after we're here. And so thank you to Fremont for hosting tonight. And and that goes for every every building that hosts. It's always great to be out in schools. I know it does take extra work. And so thank you very much for you and your staff for, for hosting tonight. Uh, as uh, Director Larson mentioned tonight, um, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. And um, I guess Fred Rogers, who said that anyone who does anything to help a child is a hero to me. I want to echo Mr. Rogers sentiment on that. Um, you know, teaching is the one profession that creates all other professions. We absolutely love our staff. We're thankful for what they do. And, and I would say that, you know, teaching has probably never been as complex as uh, at least in my, my time in the classroom and being um, a teacher at several different levels, uh, being a principal at several different levels. I look at what teachers are doing now and it's probably more complex. Um, teachers have, um, expectations that um, are profound in working with children and families, um, expectations around instruction, and and yet our teachers still show up every day. They are there for our kids every day. And um, our teachers often know that what kids need isn't always in their lesson plan that day. Um, I It's funny to be here, it's part of the staff meeting, uh, a few weeks ago here and, and said, I've had, when well, my own kids were here and um, I told the staff like, hey, we're so thankful for you. You know, it, you're part of our prayers at night when our kids say their prayers, right? Um, so just want to say thank you to our staff. They are um, loved. We're grateful for what they do. And um, hopefully, um, hopefully they feel that and know that um, as we work to celebrate them throughout the year. I always want to talk about kids as well. Um, I will, I continue to believe there's such a false narrative about kids in the media. Um, there is a disproportionate amount of media about uh, how troubled society is going to be. Um, I will always stand and say that I am absolutely optimistic about the future of our, of our schools. I'm absolutely optimistic about the future of our community and our nation. Our kids are incredible. They're amazing. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that. But if you have a chance to work with kids, you'll see that I think it's, it's the greatest generation of kids I've ever worked with in my life. They're intelligent. They're smart. They can problem solve. They do things and treat people like I wish I would have when I was a kid. And um, I just want to say we've got so many examples of kids doing great things in our community uh, you hear about these when we do the the, the uh, student recognitions but it doesn't as great as those are there could be a hundred of the recognitions every time we meet together on the amazing things kids do um i just want to say i i um again i'm optimistic about our future um, as a school district and the community because for kids they're doing great things and they're learning. And I appreciate Michelle's report tonight, Assistant Superintendent Anita's report. Um, we're seeing the growth that the board expects. And that's happening because they're getting the care and support they need to get the instruction they need to make sure that they can graduate with a plan for their success. We talked tonight about this partnership and uh, I don't need to spend much time on there, but we are, um, always interested in deepening our partnerships that support the board's goal and vision and also supports the community. The workforce needs students and workforce that is able to work in high wage, high demand jobs today. 
Every employer I talk to is begging for people that can get to work for them. We've heard about local investments, those were forest products been mentioned, but there's other employers throughout our area that are really begging for jobs in advanced manufacturing and welding and you know, auto mechanics and are the intent of this, and I appreciate the board's support on this. It'll be a two-year commitment in this position with some return on investment data that'll be coming to the board and to both myself and, and uh, Dr. Forefront at UCC to really provide a pathway for students to get into a vertical and immediately into the workforce and work here, raise a family here, buy a house here, become employed here. And this should strengthen all of our career technical work that we're doing with UCC. Um, and so I appreciate that opportunity. And lastly tonight, uh, I just wanna thank the board. Um, I, I am grateful to have seven bosses that um, sometimes might feel like they get beat up in you know, this position, they're elected. And, but this volunteer position, I could not ask for seven better people who care so deeply for kids. I don't often talk about the evening conversations we have at nine o'clock at night when a, a question and a concern. The time you spend away from your own jobs and family to think about how to benefit the community. Um, I just want to say thank you for your dedication. Really, I mean, we think about our staff and I think about our board as really being community heroes. And particularly in these volunteer positions, um, that you dedicate your time to really an improvement for the community is so um, honored. And I just want to say thank you for your leadership and thank you for your direction on ensuring that we're meeting the needs of our kids. And I appreciate your patience with me and um, your patience as we, as we really organize to get that done. And uh, so thank you very much. Director Johnson, that's all I have. Any questions of the superintendent? Hearing none, <clears throat> on behalf of the board, I would like to personally share with you, uh, superintendent, a job well done. You have a lot on your plate, and we appreciate the attention of being proactive and sharing each step along the way so we can support you. Thank you very much. We will now ask for the individual report of the directors. We will start with Director Bishop. Um, just wanted to say, appreciate the comments that were made, and I appreciate the support that individuals have for their colleagues. And uh, appreciate that this opportunity would have to be here. Uh, I appreciate the work that's being done both in the school and in the district office. There's so much that is done behind the scenes, and honestly. I feel like people really, really, really care about the students and the kids them first. And even though some things are not uh, always in the public or always things have to be done a little bit in a protective manner, there are reasons for those interactions and there's reasons for those policies that to help protect privacy and things like that that are uh, absolutely beneficial. And, uh, you hear you. Thank you. thank you, Director Bishop. Director Shercliffe. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the teachers for Teacher Appreciation Week. That's all I've got. Thanks. Thank you very much, Director Cotton. I too want to thank the guests that came tonight to speak. I think it's really important, and we do hear you. Um, so it'll be 60 years the September that I started my journey with Roseburg Public Schools at Riverside Elementary. Most of you know where element Riverside was. And there's what's left is the fifth and sixth grade classroom building. And, um, and then the gym is now Roseburg Christian Fellowship. And I can go through and name every one of my elementary teachers and most of my junior high teachers and a lot of high school teachers. But my the teacher that saved me, I had a really rough time in fourth grade was Mrs. Dorothy Wilson. And maybe some folks in here knew her. Um, she was so kind and uh, got me over the hump. And um, 
There's a lot of Mrs. Dorothy Wilsons in this district every day. And um, I wish I would have had the knowledge to be a teacher. I, I don't. Uh, I do work with kids through Young Life, and that is that is a lot of fun. Um, I just want to remind folks, I can't get political here, but uh, we do have a bond uh, for votes next week. Uh, it would really help if that bond passed. There's so many things that need to be done. I look at the vestibule out here, Fremont. It makes this school so much safer. And we, we, we need to get that done at all the schools. And I know that's going to happen. And we need to get the locks in to our buildings. And people say locks, well, these are, these are special locks where a staff member can push one button and the doors are locked. All the doors are locked. Don't have to run. And I, I was able to do the drill at the high school, the last drill they had. And I was wore out running with the administrator, his building to be responsible to make sure those doors are locked. And so there's, there's a lot of good things. Uh, better air quality. We wouldn't so much have to worry about smoke days because our kids, you know, they may not be able to go outside and play, but at least they could be in school and there's gyms and things. So I hope that um, uh, people get out and vote. It's your choice how you vote. And I would encourage the board members between now and voting day, talk to 10 to 20 people that you know and just remind them, have you voted? Uh, I think it's it's uh, it's critical. And I appreciate everyone and I especially appreciate Jared. Uh, 29 years on the board. Uh, he makes it he makes it enjoyable. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Cotton, uh, Director Larson. Um, I'll probably just echo what Director Shirtcliffe said. Um, I come from a background in education. I've lived all over the country and been involved with districts in a lot of places, and it's an honor to be here. And these are the, that's why I wasn't going to talk <laughs> every year. These are the people I trust my kids to every day, and I do trust them. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much, Director Larson, Dr. Kimmich, Kimmich, Kimmich. I just appreciate you, um, all the classified employees that came. Um, I also worked as a classified and, and I know how, um, how much you do and, and it's a difficult job and we definitely are, you know, we're pulling to, to keep you and we, you know, we want to, um, be in your court and, um, just, uh, I, also, um, we're working on the curriculum for the new math, um, and I'm kind of excited to see there will be some some changes with that um, that I think will be positive, and um, that's going to be open for parents to take a look at and be sure before we approve it and actually purchase it. So take advantage of that opportunity uh, to take a look at, at what we are going to be um maybe choosing to approve here um just appreciate that all of uh, the work that the cabinet members do and and always providing the information we ask for um quickly and and you you're very um, responsive to the board and we appreciate that thank you uh, director lee I appreciate teaching, and I as another classified teacher, really maintenance folks because of all the programs that are together. But if I talk about it, I'll follow the record. Okay, I brought tissue. And I have nothing that will add to benefit the student for moving forward. Our next uh, session will be a work session. It will be held on May 24th at the administrative office. And as a note of interest, please come prepared to take the annual photo of directors to bring your best smile and your three-piece suit.
There be no other business before the meeting as chair. I hereby adjourn the meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the board, I sincerely appreciate you taking your precious time to come share with us. Thank you very much. Have a great, safe weekend. Be dry out there. Meeting adjourned.